Blow and welcome back to the Cozy Club. I'm Cozy Gamer, and today we are getting in depth with the newly buffed Aladdin team. That's right, guys. The Aladdin team is going to get buffed. And let me tell you, they didn't really even need a buff as before. They were doing pretty well with a lot of them in the B and A tier in a tier list. However, after the spell nerf, they got even better. What happened after the spell nerf is that debuffs and buffs matter a lot more. So Jafar's viability went through the roof. Aladdin is already solid and got already even more better. And Genie, well, Genie, I think, is slept on, guys. And now he's probably one of the best characters in this game, maybe top 20, top 15. It's impressive to see these Aladdin characters get good, and I love to see it. Now, they are looking to be one of the best team comps within DSA, and when you start the game, there's probably not a better start than getting Sean Yu from the Arena Exchange, and then everything else, focus on Aladdin, maybe get your far starting out, but either way, you've got Aladdin, Genie, Jasmine, Sean Yu, and then go with someone like Captain Jack. That's a perfect starting team, and you're gonna get yourself well far within uh, live PvP and Sorcerer's Tournament. Not to mention, those people are gonna help you in Tower 3, 5, 1. They just have great viability overall, and that's why I suggest going for them starting out now. We're gonna be doing a complete farming guide pretty soon, and I'll have that out here in the next week or so, and you can bet that they're gonna be on that list. Alrighty now, so we're gonna go ahead and go in depth right now and look at their stats, their abilities, some strategy when using the Aladdin characters, and my overall thoughts on this new buffed Aladdin team. All right, first off, we're gonna start with Genie, and guys, I am so glad that Genie got a large buff. He's probably a top three favorite character of mine just in the Disney universe, and if we do do a uh, top tournament for the characters on my Twitch stream, you can assure that I will be betting for him. Now, after the buff, guys, Genie works like Sven in a way that he does a lot of basic attacks to do some massive damage. I've seen him take down half health more dues and even almost full health Olaf's just by smacking all these basic attacks mixed with the shadows, bucket of soldiers, you just keep on stacking the basic attack with him. So first off with his basic, he's gonna shoot his magic fire finger pistols and he's going to be doing some pretty good damage on the enemy. It's gonna have a chance to go to adjacent enemies and keep in mind that these are tallying up because each time that cosmic power does hit an enemy, it's gonna hit 50% harder for each stack that is done. So effectively, from each previous hit of cosmic power, this is gonna do 50% more damage. That's why you wanna stack on the shadows and all the clones that he does with his passive to hit as much damage as possible. Kinda like Elsa, you do need to build this up a little bit and get some momentum going, so you wanna survive until then, and luckily, Jasmine helps us out with that. But we'll get to her in a second. Now his first ability is the rocket. Let's just go ahead and show that right now. You're gonna see it's gonna do silence and offense down, and it also does a good amount of damage. So overall, this is a strong, solid first ability for Genie. All right, so they went ahead and buffed up his hat trick ability, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna clean up to two harmful effects on your team. Then what it'll do is if it can, it'll flip those to helpful effects for your team, and then it'll put them on random enemies, the harmful effects. Overall, very solid move, kind of has a wand-esque feeling to it that it clinches your characters, gives them the opposite effect, but then you're in addition gonna get the bad effects on the enemy. How this can stack up with Jafar later is just awesome. Now, I just had to see it. I'm so glad they went true to the movie and have friend like me as a passive. So what this passive does is it really makes Genie one of the best supports in the game because he's actually supporting. On is probably the best support in the game with Genie being right after that. But Anna, besides doing the speed up, she does a lot more as far as helping out with utility for the team, whereas Genie is going to help keep you alive and truly support your team in getting rid of harmful effects and just making sure that you guys don't die. So what's gonna happen is the first time one of your characters die, if it's Aladdin, he's gonna go ahead and gain haste and some other buffs and he gets restored with invincibility. If anyone else on your team dies, they're also going to be resurrected and have invincibility on, so you're guaranteed to be able to have them before they just die off again. And this was a huge buff on this passive, and it makes it even better than it already was. And for his last passive, he's gonna go ahead and keep on duplicating himself, and he's going to be creating a bunch of kind of shadow genies, but they won't look like shadows. They can only use cosmic power. But the good news of this is that cosmic power is really what you need to be laying out the big damage. So how this happens is if he gets a harmful effect on him, he's gonna clone himself. So things like wild imagination, you're gonna be able to get some of those uh, genie clones out there just because someone's using a spell. 
there's a lot of hopeful effects floating out there within the meta and with some of the better teams. So you should see a lot of genies stacking up pretty fast. Looking at his stats, he's going to have 1,380 offense, and that's tied for 11th in the game. His defense at 393 is tied for 6th in the game, which is surprising. He's got some good defense because his health is a little lower than average at 16,616. And his speed's going to be 102, which is a little slow when in comparison to like Soli behind me here. They have the same speed, and I really think of him as a slower moving character. So that is the one con to Genie, but he should be moving enough, and you're not going to notice too much under that Sean Yu lead. Now for some tips and tricks. If you don't have any Genie duplicates, go ahead and use one of his abilities, like the Rocket ability. Unless you do have like Charm or one of the stronger debuffs on your team, then go ahead and flip that with the Hat Trick, and that's also a good use of those first turns. Then you want to start getting the Finger Guns ready and do Cosmic Power as much as possible. As for abilities for Genie, I would go ahead and upgrade his basic twice, and then go and get the silence on the rocket after that i would really go and focus hat trick and friend like me go ahead and get one on each and then finish off hat trick followed by the last passive of duplicates it's not too too big of an upgrade that you can get that one last all right so we've talked about aladdin a lot in this game and a lot of my other videos but that doesn't mean we're not going to address him today aladdin is one of the best characters in the game a top 10 character and definitely on offense he offers so much with all of his abilities making him good from early game to late game his basic does more damage and higher damage on both stun and slow enemies and the good news for aladdin is that most of the characters that you're going to fight with is going to have slows and stuns so this basic is going to do a lot more damage typically now for his signature move one jump ahead he's going to go up in the air and slam down he's got a chance to gain haste and he's also going to give himself evasion which i know you guys have heard me complain before it is so annoying to get aladdin down because he keeps on getting evasion now, if you have the claw or some other ways around it, you can get around it, but it does make Aladdin a lot harder to kill. And that's good because he's a little squishy. Now, I love Jasmine and Aladdin together because they're going to go ahead and assist each other on a lot of the moves that they have. And that damage really starts to stack up, especially now that Jasmine is hitting even harder. All right, now, Carpet is a great first opening move because it's going to do flanking damage. It's going to inflict slow on all the enemies. And on top of that, you have a chance to remove 30% speed turn meter. It does some great damage and overall it helps control the battle when you go out there early with your fast Sean Yu team. And lastly, he's got a passive that's going to go ahead and do some healing. It's not a lot of healing, so I really want to upgrade this fast, but it is fun to watch him eat an apple and it does okay to heal up just a little bit and survive maybe one or two more hits. Now looking at the stats, he's going to have 1,447 offense that's tied for 11th in this game. That's pretty solid stats there in the offense category. His defense is 323 and that's below the average defense. Also, his health is 14,401 and that's tied for kind of lower on the list and most attackers do have lower health. And lastly, his speed is 111. And let me tell you, that's tied for the 10th fastest in the game. And once he's under Sean Yu, he's really going to be going pretty fast against the enemy. Now, as for abilities, I would go ahead and upgrade his one jump ahead to level two, followed by carpet, and then get his basic to level two. And then lastly, put some on the passive if you do have enough mats. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and talk about our crush as a child, at least my crush, and that is going to be Jasmine. And let me tell you guys, Jasmine got a lot better for many different reasons. So they did mess with her stats a little bit. She has a little bit more offense and a little bit less defense. She's in this perfect middle spot as far as where she belongs offense or a defensive character but the good news is they buffed Raja huge and I will get to that in just a second now, I was working on my complete tier list the other day and like I couldn't really find a place for Jasmine she didn't do a lot but now with the buff she has earned her spot on the Aladdin team without question now first off is her basic where she does offensive down which is a solid basic to start out with She'll be using that a lot as she'll have Raja out and do her ability by her third turn. She'll just be smacking her stick. And that's what you're going to be using mainly. All right. So now let's get to Raja. They essentially saw the trolls with the frozen team and decided to make Raja just as strong. Plus, with Jasmine's upgraded ability, he's going to be able to have defense up as soon as he comes into the battle. And guys, he has the most defense out of any tank, really, summonable, and he has a two-turn time. So he's calling all the damage to him, has a ton of defense. He can also, at max level, hit about 2,000 damage with his uh, claw swipe. Raja's now a clear-cut favorite 
but one of the best summonable creatures within the game. So it's okay that they nerfed Jasmine's defense because Raj is really going to be taking the heavy hits. And then while Raj is doing his thing, Jasmine can do her thing by doing big attacks on the enemy, calling Aladdin to assist. It works really well now and the flow is really nice when using a full kingdom team. Okay, so Jasmine has 1400 offense, which is great and almost up there with Aladdin now that she's hitting more damage. Her defense is at 370 and her health is 16,136. Overall, she's a pretty well balanced stat wise and you're not going to regret using her in your kingdom lineup. The last note on Jasmine is that she's already really good in PvP now, but Guys, in PvE, she was already my go-to to get three stars on the challenges and in the towers, especially tower five and three. But now what you can do is you put out Raja. Raja's gonna be a tank now, taking in those hits. And you should be able to, with enough RNG, get three stars on anything that you're kind of facing early on in the game and into late game. All right, as far as abilities go with Jasmine, I would go ahead and max out Raja as he is going to be the most vital part of her kit. Then get rid of her basic because she's gonna be using that a lot. Get the big hit assist with Aladdin and then follow up with the passive. All right, now his kit was already good. And if you're a long-term member of the Cozy Club, you know that I wanted him to get a buff and that is Jafar. Now Jafar probably saw the biggest leap in viability once the spells got nerfed as he's very heavy in debuffs and Juan used to just get rid of his two turn charm in just a second. But now Jafar is even better and let's go ahead and take a dive and look at his kit. So his basic is gonna go ahead and hit some big damage. And on top of that, he's gonna be doing continuous damage which is important because we'll get to it in a second, but the more debuffs that Jafar is putting out there, the better. His first ability is gonna go ahead and do a two turn charm on the enemy and it's very Jafar-esque as it's also gonna give the enemy uh, offense up. And so you're gonna see the enemy use a basic ability on their teammate and they're hyped up because they're gonna have offensive up for the two turns that they're under your control. Now time's running out, got the buff and I like what they did here. Essentially, you're gonna put a debuff, which is the hourglass on them, for four turns now. And it's like this ticking time bomb that's gonna do more and more damage once it's over because they did give it a buff of 33%. Cool thing now is you can spread it with Madame Mim if you wanted to, so you could get a bunch of hourglasses out there. And here's the trick, whoever has the hourglass on them, the more debuffs that go on that target, that hourglass is gonna expire sooner. So that's what I was talking about before with Genie. You can go ahead and use Genie's hat trick to help out Jafar's targeted enemy. And you're gonna see that big expel attack happen a lot sooner. I love Jafar's passive. He has a 15% chance to do his breathing fire ability when a villain attacks. And that's so cool because what's gonna happen is the fire breathing ability is a massive hit. So you essentially have a pretty Pretty good shot to continually do massive hits with your teammates. Now looking at his offense, it's 1,567, which is the sixth highest in the game, meaning Jafar is going to really be pumping out that damage. Remember, both good stats and abilities is going to make a very good character. You can catch that in my stat video guide that I just made the other day. But Jafar is going to be doing some big attacks. On top of that, Jafar's defense is 399, a little higher than the normal defense. His speed's at 113, which is the seventh fastest in the game. Now, with Sean Yu, that's going to be even more and you can make him even faster. His health is 14,521, and that's about middle of the pack. So overall, Jafar is going to have some pretty solid stats. You can go ahead and get that first charm out there to start the match, and then go ahead and get that hourglass working as well. You can combine these in any order, and ability recommendation-wise, really all of his abilities add so much when you upgrade them. So I would really go all of them at level 2, and then level 3 the other ones after that. Jafar really is a BA of a character, and you're not going to regret getting him. You're going to need the other Aladdin heroes to unlock him in the Aladdin an event that's going to be coming really soon but trust me it's going to be worth the unlock my friends if you want to see me use aladdin and the whole crew you can go ahead and join me on twitch i have the description below and you can find my twitch channel go ahead and follow or subscribe we go live pretty much all week on tuesday thursdays fridays and sundays guys it's a great time and even more fun community now wrapping up looking at the positioning really you want to make sure that genie is lined up with Raja. So you can kind of control where Raja goes, but Raja's going to be taking a lot of hits because he's got the taunt on him. So you want those harmful effects to spread the genie so that he can duplicate and then lay out the big damage with his basics. So the main strategy out there is you're going to be going first most of the time with Sean Yu. You can get that carpet out there to put the slow, get the charm up with Jafar or put the hourglass on, and then you want to get Raja out as soon as possible as he will be soaking up the damage. Genie does his silence or other things that he can offer, or you can go ahead and flip and give back harmful effects, making that expiration go even faster if that's the route you want to take. 
There's many strategies that you can do with the Aladdin team. And I'm going to go ahead and post some other graphics in my Discord. And you can find those soon if you join in the link below. All right, there you guys have it. The new Aladdin buff characters. And guys, I'm not disappointed. And again, I love seeing Aladdin, Lion King, some of my favorite Disney movies have the top tier characters. I want to thank you so much for coming over to the Cozy Club. We got two videos out for you today, and we're going to have even more going on next week. Again, we have the new Fast Pass weekly series, and I also have a new weekly video that's going to be coming out on Tuesdays that I think you guys are going to like. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join me on Twitch. I'll see you on Discord, and thank you for making this the best community ever. Again, it's a beautiful day for some DSA. We'll see you soon.